Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Racha Kodash, which is to say the only true names of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out a hearty shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so in efforts to waking up the hopeful elect. And to the believers and the few sisters that watch, I say shalom to you as well. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with the Psalm of the Week. And as usual, we do this through the Spirit at random. And, uh, you know, Lord willing, it's edifying, okay? So let's jump on in. This is uh, Psalms chapter 95, okay? And it's a, you know, pretty short one. But like I say, you know, I do this, you know, in efforts of, you know, as exhortation and, you know, just hearing... Um, you know, um, songs, okay? That's what the word songs means. It means uh, songs, okay? And these were songs that were sung, okay? And they're extremely spiritual and uplifting, okay? As well as prophetical. And, um, you know, uh, something that we all, you know, should, uh, you know, should tap into on a regular basis, okay? Because uh, one of the one of the main uh vibrations behind the psalms is prayer and supplication okay and as we all know we're entering into some you know um you know some serious times okay um and uh our secret weapon okay or our greatest weapon okay here on earth is what prayer you know and supplication okay so uh no further ado let's hop in it says praise to yahweh by hashem yahweh shai and warning against unbelief okay verse one it says oh come let us sing unto yahweh by shim yahweh shai let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation okay the rock of our salvation okay and obviously um we also refer to uh our lord yahweh shai as that rock okay that rock um that um you know that broke the statue you know uh, that we read about in the book of daniel okay but uh, ultimately you know it's of yahweh you know but uh as the scriptures tell us in the prophecy he's going to send his son back and he's going to be you know our salvation or our savior okay verse two it says let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. You see? With psalms. Okay? In, 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 in the Hebrew, it's the halyum. Okay? Which, like I said, means songs. And, and I always quote, I mean, I always quote this brother, you know, the brother Ramak. He always, you know, exhorts brothers, hey, sing to the Lord, you know? <laughs> you know, you know, you know, brothers ain't the best singers, but it doesn't matter. You know, the most high is not putting on an American idol. <laughs> you know competition so yeah you know sing sing to the lord man okay you can even read these psalms you know and sing it you know and and, and, and challenge yourself you know speaking to myself first and foremost you know learn them learn them in the hebrew and sing it you know sing it to the lord he's well pleased with it as we're reading i read this again verse two let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with Psalms, verse three, and then ultimately, okay, the 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 the, the premier song, okay, is this truth? It's what we're preaching, you know. The scriptures speak about, um, um, you know, uh, there was a song, and only the hundred and forty four, uh, hundred and forty four thousand could uh, knew that song. You know, roughly paraphrasing, you know. And that's the that's the ultimate song, you know, the truth of the scriptures. Verse three, it says, For Yahweh Shmiyahu Shai is a great power and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea 
is his and he made it and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, our maker, for he is our power and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Okay, and more specifically, that's speaking about who? The Israelites. Okay, the Israelites. We are his people. Okay, we are his people. Okay, and it's reiterated all throughout the scriptures. Okay, and, and, and if you, you're, you know, still in denial and, you know, not sure, well, first and foremost, you need to pray. You know, you need to pray to the Heavenly Father to reveal these things to you, you know. And um, study more, okay? And if that doesn't work, then maybe this isn't for you, okay? But it's all throughout the scriptures, you know. And, and, and one may say, well, what about the Gentiles? Well, though the Gentiles that can be saved are Israelites, okay, who've uh, taken up heathen customs or a heathen way of living okay and um you know uh, uh not practicing in the commonwealth of the nation of israel okay and you israelites will be you negroes latinos native americans west indians and haitians and they that be of the speckled bird who look like the other nations whose lineage goes back to the 12 tribes of israel okay Verse 7, it says, for he is our power and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Okay. I.e. lost sheep of the house of Israel. You see, it says today, if you will hear his voice. Right. And it says to, it says today. Uh, Salakia. Let me read that again. Verse 7, for he is our power. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Okay. And it's going back to, you know, when we came out of Egypt, the Exodus. You see, and that's another key indicator of who his people are, okay? Because who was in the wilderness? The Israelites, okay? Now, did you have uh, a mixed, uh, mixed multitude amongst them? Of course, okay? But they were servants, you see? They were servants and basically spoils, booty, okay? Look up that word, uh, uh, booty. It goes back to spoils, okay? But the, the, the directions and... You know, the, the oracles and the, the covenant was given to the children of Israel, you know, plain and simple. OK, so it says I read the eight again, harden not your heart. OK, and when it says harden not your heart, OK, your heart is your mind. You go into that word heart there. It's love in the Hebrew. OK, so basically the Lord is saying, don't be hard headed. OK, harden not your heart as in the provocation. Uh, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, verse nine, when your fathers tempted, uh, tempted me, provoked me and saw my work. OK. And, you know, I speak for myself, you know, um, you know, finding out that I was an Israelite, you know, and I was uh, pretty much, you know, uh, the Lord used, uh, you know, uh, the the Yahweh Ben Yahweh, uh, you know, faction, you know, uh, basically because there, there's, uh, I think, you know, the, 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 their headquarters, you know, was in Miami and, uh, you know, one of their, uh, you know, followers, you know, who has rank, he still would teach on the radio, you know, he had a radio station and he would teach on the radio. And, uh, you know, the Lord used him to enlighten me to that. And eventually, you know, I picked that Bible up and started reading. 
And when I read those first five books of the Bible, man, I, it was hook, line, and sinker. You know, I knew for 100% surety that we, okay, we were the Israelites, you know, and not because of, you know, um, the, the, the marvelousness or the, um, the, sanctif the sanctification of, of our people, okay, or us being set apart. No, it, it was the curses. It, it was the, the hard-headedness, the stiff neck, okay, the rebelliousness that let me knew, let me <laughs> let me knew, let me know that um, we were the Israelites, okay? And then, you know, obviously, you know, I sincerely sought after the Lord, and he led me to the true teachers here at Great Millstone, you know, the elder apostles, okay? But... Um, you know, I was assured that we were the Israelites, okay? It says, when your fathers tempted me, uh, it's a lock it. it says, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, right? Cause, you know, like, it, it, was, it was irritating, you know, reading that. You know, but like I said, at the same time, it let me know that, you know, it was a key indicator that we, we are those people. OK, you know, like and I'm looking, you know, you know, doing a process of elimination while I'm reading it. You know, obviously having, you know, heard that we are the Israelites, you know, but it was it was it was a very, very, very um, novice um, understanding. Very, very novice. Didn't know. You know, how the tribes broke down and none of that. Just, you know, knew that we were Israelites. Okay. And this, and this guy, one of his slogans was Latin, black, and white must unite, you know, which is all the way off. Okay. But you know how the Heavenly Father gets down. He'll use somebody to, you know, spark that fire. And, you know, hey, it's up to you to, to, to kindle it, you know, until it ignites, you know, in the form of you what? Coming into this truth. Okay. And, but the thing is, our people saw it. They, they saw, you know, the, the chariot, you know, that was leading them by day and by night. You know, they saw Pharaoh and his armies, you know, come after them and be drowned, okay, and then walk through on dry shot. They saw all these things and still provoked the Heavenly Father and tempted him, okay? I knew for a fact those were our people. The, we were those people. Verse 10, it says, uh, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said it is a people that that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. OK, so, you know, it, it's speaking about, you know, the, 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 and really what it boils back down to is what we read here in the header. Praise to the Lord and warning against disbelief. Right. As the scriptures say, uh, uh, Romans, the 15th chapter, I believe the fourth verse, it tells you that all things, all things were written aforetime. So uh, uh, for our learning. OK, so that through the scriptures, we may have comfort. You see, so now we got foresight. We understand who we are. We know that we are the people. OK. And for 40 years. Uh, 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 the Heavenly Father had us walking around in the wilderness, basically doing circles, okay? And, and why was that? To eradicate uh, uh, the nation of all the degenerates and reprobates, okay? And evildoers and idol worshipers, okay? But the great news is this time, the Heavenly Father's not doing that, Okay? He's going to destroy all the reprobates, the evildoers, okay? Uh, those who won't repent, the unbelieving, okay? He's going to he's gonna erase them on this side, okay? And deliver solely his elect, you see? That's why uh, everything is written for a time. So that we can learn, you know what? Don't be like those niggas, man, you know? Because the scriptures tell us it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Hey, but it, like, it's, like, like I said, it all boils back down to unbelief. They didn't believe. And they saw it. You see? And just the beauty in, in the, the, you know, the divine nature of the Heavenly Father for him to say, you know what? 
you know what? I'm not doing that anymore, okay? I'm not taking the whole nation out. I'm, I'm only taking those that's going to believe in me that haven't seen me, okay? That, that are going to believe on me out of faith, you see? So in verse 9, it says, when your father, when your father's tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, verse 10, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said it is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Verse 11, it says, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Okay. And guess what? The Heavenly Father is a man that he should not change. Okay. Um, so that vibration he had with us coming out of Egypt is the same thing vibration uh, with us coming out of this Egypt. Okay. Which America is the modern day Egypt. Okay. Uh, Babylon the Great. So just as the Heavenly Father said, you know, the non-believers and the, the wicked, okay, and those that, that, that provoke the Heavenly Father, okay, and tempt the Heavenly Father, the scriptures say you're not going to enter into his rest, okay? You're not going to enter into his rest. And that should be the focal point, man, okay? Salvation. Why? Because we see this thing, this pot is boiling over, okay, and America's on his way out. These Edomites are going crazy. He knows, he knows that he has but a short time, so he's going to come down with great wrath as we read in Revelation, the 12th chapter. Okay, so watch as well as pray. Akiah. Shalom.